we've seen in the past there's sometimes been a little bit of a challenge when players have to decide between playing for their country versus playing for a club when the club cricket is happening at the same time at the end of the day national pride is important to a lot of people it's not important to all you're not going to get all 11 players to come but i'm saying Fair even enough. losing one player like a lasit malinga losing that player from sri lanka using karen pollard from west indies is huge after a point the ipl is nothing without the players if you don't bring in the best talent it's not going to be as big a success there's a bunch of confusion on how cricket is going to go we don't have all the answers i'm pretty sure icc doesn't have all the answers pcc i might have a lot of answers they're the ones the raising players. the questions they're That's the ones correct. raising the questions <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to All About Sports, the podcast, a podcast by the fans, for the fans. This week's episode is all about the future of cricket, but specifically focusing on the conflict that sometimes exists between international cricket versus club cricket, and if we see any changes that we might expect in the future in terms of how much club cricket versus international cricket is played. It's actually a continuation of our discussion last week that was about the different formats of cricket that currently exists. and how we see the game sort of transitioning to becoming shorter and shorter and kind of trying to understand you know what the future is for odi cricket if it will even exist or not so if you do like this episode you may want to check out last week's episode as well but with that let's get into this week's episode hope you enjoy mas i want to pivot a little bit from this conversation on format to talk a little bit about the broader structure of how cricket is played cricket is one of the sports that unlike i'd say a lot of sports is centered around an international format which i think is sometimes a bit challenging to your point of it is hard to always have relevant cricket being played you know when you have these big icc tournaments like the world cup there is something at stake there, there is just a format that gets you excited because you have knockouts and a final and a big trophy at the end the rest of the time there are a bunch of bilateral series which sometimes you would argue are it's hard to get excited about your face exactly explains i would say the two of us are are pretty big cricket fans i'll be honest i don't know the last time i've sat and watched multiple games of a bilateral series consistently sat in front of the tv and watched it maybe the border gavaskar trophy is the only example of one that maybe i sit and watch a couple of the test matches but that might be the only example yeah so, but krishna that's what i'm saying test match cricket that yeah. is test match cricket yeah it's not the limited overs that we tune into that so it's like it's one of those what makes test cricket special is the lack of it yep and what makes t20 special is the entertainment factor and that's yep. where 50 over cricket is now caught in limbo i was going to say and it's one of those tough things where it seems really hard to get excited for some of these random series that exist right we saw even leading up to this world cup india south africa it's relevant only because they're basically practicing for the odi world cup when you look at the flip side of it and you see the crowds turning out to say an ipl you see the crowds turning up to say the, even the big bash tournament the, every single year the kfc big bash both the men's and the women's league have a phenomenal turnout in terms of viewership do you see international cricket continuing in the way that it has historically or is there an opportunity to kind of switch cricket to be similar to you know football similar to basketball similar to basketball is a bad comparison because there's basically no international relevant international basketball champions uh, but- of the world <laughs> what i have to watch the nba finals and they have world champion on their head world champion of what <laughs> the united states <laughs> no get me wrong <laughs> I, I love the US at times <laughs> but that ain't the world it's also hilarious cuz you immediately got jumped out by like everyone in the nba <laughs> and what's even funnier was that then they went on to lose the world cup world champion of what <laughs> the united states <laughs> don't get me wrong i love the us at times <laughs> the world yeah oh boy it's been a rough uh, a rough couple of months for usa basketball but coming back to cricket let's compare it to say football right football is primarily a sport organized at the club level and then ever so often you have a world cup you have the euros you have concacaf tournaments 
you have you know copa america but that is kind of interspersed within club football is there an opportunity given the demand we've seen for these club tournaments to switch more than that more to that format remove a lot of these bilateral and trilateral series maybe keep a few essential ones you said like test cricket you have the structure of the world test championship that maybe maintains entertainment but can we remove 50 to 60% of these series and sub it out with more cr- club cricket or do you frankly think there isn't as high an appetite maybe the appetite is high because there's not that much of it at the moment it's a tricky one i don't think the pool of c- cricketers is big enough to explore this option the simple reason i say that is look at the number of footballers that come up the problem is the cricketers are still limited in terms of identifying who are really up to that level right you only have a bit what fifa has 200 member nations at the end of the day so it's very different and it's difficult for cricket to follow that approach i also don't think it's possible because like i said like what happens is the skill levels get skewed massively it'll become like this right like the ipl becomes the premier league then what happens to the other ones they tried it right with the champions league uh the champions leagues that they created with all the t20 winners from all the countries there was only one so case. the three different night riders that came together to put to play against each other <laughs> no but what's funny was in that also like it was fun but at the same time the ipl it, it, there was so much of a conflict for the players it became really tricky for a lot of them where they were like okay uh, i'll play for csk because i'm getting paid more but i but i'm also the captain of the damn south african t20 t- champions now what do i do you know what i'm trying to say is it's really difficult to set it up like that you can't go the down that path simply because like i said it's a numbers game i don't think there's enough of good enough talent to make it a competitive all around system where everyone can then go play their respective league competitions literally you're going to get all the viewership only in one pocket in india at this point or maybe max to max the big bash I did have a question and, though as as can I can I counter that with one question though Mars and cuz and, and yeah. I'll admit I didn't come up with this a friend of this a friend of mine right. actually mentioned this what if you have unlike I I realize I gave cricket as a uh, football is the example where you have basically multiple leagues going on simultaneously what if you basically had IPL but only at the same time only IPL is being played so Jan Ma, Feb to March is only IPL then april to june is the kfc season the the big bash season you know end of the year is the caribbean league season so there isn't i agree there's not enough players to maybe have these things simultaneously going on but if you kind of layered it separately into different parts of the year and they all kind of moved across to play within each region do you see that as more of a feasible system because i agree the multi leagues at the same time i don't know if it's possible but at but different Krishnan, why would why would anyone do that and how does it benefit anyone it becomes like it loses its specialty there right like if they play the ipl and the same players are going and playing in their same teams respective teams in the other leagues what do you think is not working about what made the major league cricket tournament not work the fact that they had a team called mi my new york at the end of the day right my mi cape town my cape town then trinbago night riders it's essentially the same ownership it's the same players it's really pointless and and most cricket is not consumed in the stadium right most cricket is consumed through broadcast itself so it doesn't matter whether you're playing in the west indies whether you're playing in india if the best are playing you'll watch it So I just think it's a redundant system more than anything. It's something in- interesting, but there needs to be a structure to it and something that makes sense to it. And I don't see anything that fits in right now, at least from a structure standpoint. 
that's a good that, that is a good point because i guess to some extent it's just different permutations and combinations of the same players and it's almost like if you could create different fantasy lineups uh just being set up in different countries is what will basically happen which which really makes a good point because one of the beautiful things about the football system is in different leagues you're seeing different players playing you're getting to see like it's exciting when a player moves across league whereas here it'll be the same pocket of players just shifting across leagues admittedly they'll be playing with different players but it doesn't have the same charm of maybe the cross league format that exists in football i want to add one more thing krishnan and this is a question to you do you genuinely think the way cricket is run with the icc stranglehold picked by the bcci followed by the australian cricket board and the ecb how like i don't realistically see that being possible because they want to keep that money right they want to maintain that stranglehold so why would the bcci be open to having a similar league in the caribbean with all their players going and doing something because that money is not coming into the country or coming to bcci then do you genuinely think from a financial standpoint it can even happen that's a good point i i would hope i guess i'm optimistic that i would still think viewership even in that structure viewership would be much higher for say the ipl then followed big bash then then be followed by big bash then be followed by english cricket but you're right it will make the caribbean premier league stronger because if it's not being played at the same time as other tournaments more players can go to those tournaments theoretically indian players can play in those other tournaments as well uh, is my idea of how it would work of course from a political standpoint which is i know a, a whole other episode we could have yes there is a very low probability that bcci Austra- the australian cricket board or the ecb is won- willing to maybe loosen the stranglehold that they currently have on international cricket it's more of a hopeful plea i guess i'm a believer that there is potential for it to be better for cricket viewership uh, i'm less optimistic like you said that from a political and a financial perspective they care about their own money and not so much like how much the west indian cricket board is making for example icc i will admit maybe is slightly invested in that but i don't think bcci is which is definitely going to be a challenge i think the other challenge which i think you kind of alluded to as well in your point is it might mean the death of a lot of cricketers right you look at for example a team like afghanistan playing in this tournament there are 11 cricketers that come to play this tournament you change that up with a you know with a big bash or a ipl there's going to be maybe three or four players that get picked up in these leagues right maybe mohammad nami of course rashid khan maybe a couple of bowlers but mujib that's it mujib but a majority yeah, of them it. would not get picked up same thing with bangladesh same thing with netherlands a majority of these players would not really get an opportunity to play and as a result probably not get an opportunity to really earn income anyway right because there's no like why would the afghanistan board even keep a cricket board like paying them on an annual basis if all they have to keep them for is a tournament that's once every 2 years or once every 4 years so i think that is one challenge that we might see on the flip side i w- i did want to call out one interesting thing in terms of the income distribution that i think will anyway cause this issue we've seen in the past there's sometimes been a little bit of a challenge when players have to decide between playing for their country versus playing for a club when the club cricket is happening at the same time we saw lasit malinga for a small portion of time deciding to play for mumbai indians instead of sri lankan cricket same thing with a couple of west indian cricketers one of the interesting things that i found is there was a analysis that was done that looked at the average salaries paid to you know paid by by country and the highest was australia that on average with all their match fees as well as salaries australian cricket players from their board were getting paid between 362000 dollars to 1.75 million dollars and that's the highest level at the lowest level were three countries which is ireland zimbabwe and afghanistan afghanistan which is the lowest of them is paid 20000 to 40000 dollars per year bangladesh is slightly above those three tiers and bangladesh cricketers paid between 55000 and 212000 per year now you compare that to say the you know the big bash league or the ipl 
in the big bash league the base salary that a player can earn is 42000 dollars so and this is australian dollars so you corrected a bit let's say for us dollars so the minimum that you can make in australian cricket is about the maximum that you can make playing for your afghanistani national side so as an afghanistan cricketer i can imagine saying if i have a tournament playing for afghanistan cricket even if it puts me in jeopardy of losing my spot in this national team for the entire year as long as i get picked up by the big bash league the least i can make is probably higher from that one tournament than what i would make from playing for afghanistan that entire year so i think that is one piece that we might see as a bit of a challenge to continue especially with ipl ipl players make even more on average right we've seen the highest pay that was received in terms of ipl earnings in the last tournament was sam curran getting about 2.26 million in salary which is higher than the highest paid australian cricketer from the acb i think that is one aspect that might put a little bit more pressure on this international and club relationship over the years when there is a conflict will players choose to stick with their country or will they choose to risk even losing a relationship with the acb knowing hey i can consistently get a i believe in myself enough to consistently get a contract in a club level but i feel like krishnan in that sense it just gives other opportunities to other players at the international level i don't think that will change because at the end of the day national pride is important to a lot of people it's not important to all it's a bit tricky with the west indies because there is no nation right it's the caribbean islands coming together being represented by a board so they don't have that patriotism aspect so much so as a reason why rule of van der merwe and the likes chose to play for the netherlands instead of south africa because they didn't have to go down the copac route and sign those contracts and that gave them an opportunity to play the franchise uh, cricket as well and then represent the slightly smaller associate nations so there is that work around and people are doing it and i think it's giving impetus to growth of the sport in general the fact that vandam over represented south africa was a match winner for them on multiple occasions comes and then beats south africa it just makes it so much more amazing so i wouldn't want that to change and i think and i also feel that sometimes money goes out of the window because whatever you said is not less money especially in a country like bangladesh if you're making that money you live a king's life at the end of the day krishna it's 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 about rash being rational because sport is not rational right like we've grown up dreaming to represent our nation especially in cricket it's like my dream is to play for my country it's just how it's em- em- embedded into us it's 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 a thing so i'm i can't give it a rational explanation but it happens so like i said all the all the players we see who have picked franchise cricket over their nation is due to certain reasons like this malinga doing it was because even he didn't trust the sister, the sri lankan cricket board at all because of its corruption sangakara spoke about it as well if there is conflict like this there will be obviously rebels as well so that's my take on what what you had to say i'm not saying your point is not valid it's a great point and it's something that is highly contentious and something worth exploring to see how it can potentially work out but i just think that some things are just now it's trying to leave out all the facts and all everything and just being a bit more realistic about the way things play out no and i think i think the pride that players have in their country will maintain the fact that international cricket will be still be strong the question i think comes up is when bcci starts to bcci or any club what starts wanting to apply pressure because right now the ipl is generally not one of the big tournaments are they're pretty cautious about not putting it at the same time as let's say the ashes but the moment i, I the ipl or any board wants to start applying that pressure and go oh no where are she going to schedule our tournament the same time as a big tournament of yours a big tournament like the big bash a big tournament like england traveling to australia for the ashes after four years i think that's when i'd be curious to see how those but krishnan everyone are. has 
but everyone stands to lose in that, right? Again, it comes back to the patriotism part. Yeah. After a point, a lot of the Aussies will be like, hey, listen, go to hell. We're going to play at home. Mm-hmm. After a point, they'll be like, we're earning enough to want our league to succeed. We're not going to come. Because even at the end of the day, the, the day, the players also have the demand, right? After a point, the IPL is nothing without the players. If you don't bring in the best talent, it's not going to be as big a success. So I think that's something that you aren't taking into consideration, right? Oh, no, I don't think it'll be everyone. My thing is, I just think it takes one or two big pins to fall. Like, I can imagine a, a, a Kevin Peterson being someone convinced to do something like this. Like, anyone, even a Ben Stokes. But Krishna, you're using the worst example again. The guy literally leaked texts about the I know, South Africa. I'm saying you'll have one or two players like that in every team. I'm saying you just need to get... I'm not saying you'll get everyone. You won't get everyone. But I think every team has one or two people who aren't as Problem. nationally proud. So I'm saying you can have one or two people like, you know, someone like Ben, I'm not saying Ben Stokes is not loyal to the English cricket team. He's very loyal to the English cricket team. But, you know, he has different, like he has different identities, different parades. There are certain players in every team I think you can kind of notch off and pick up. You're not going to get all 11 players to come. But I'm saying even losing one player, like a Lasith Malinga, losing that player from Sri Lanka is huge. Using Kyron Pollard from West Indies is huge. And we've seen it. That's brought the death or. To West Indian cricket, we've clearly seen that. Sri Lanka's on the verge because of the same reason as well. Interesting. This links to our previous episode. Bad ownership in a way. Badly run organizations. So that's cool. But no, I, I agree, Krishnan, and I get your point. I don't know. Let's see. It's interesting. Let's see how it plays out. I think that's the that's the perfect ending to our episode, which is let's see. I think it's cricket is is probably in like for some years been in a weird spot where we don't entirely know where it's going i know that like potentially think you're bringing back the champions trophy there's a bunch of confusion on how cricket is going to go we don't have all the answers i'm pretty sure icc doesn't have all the answers bcc i might have a lot of answers that we don't know about just yet we'll find out through some surprise press they're the ones raising the questions they're That's the ones correct. raising the questions <laughs> they're the ones who define the questions raise the questions cause questions but with that, let's wrap up this episode. It's been really good talking to you, Muz. For those of you listening, do leave in the comments or share with us in any other way you feel what you, where you think cricket is going, where you'd like cricket to go. But with that, signing off from this week's episode. If you did like this episode, do like and share it. With that, have a great rest of your week. Take care. If you like this episode, make sure to leave a like and share it with anyone else who might be interested. You can also subscribe on any social media platform that you prefer and all our links are in the bio. We also have a website with all our episodes as well as blogs and a whole lot of other sports content so make sure to check that out as well.